Thank you, Nigel, fellow Rotarians. Um, high Impact Projects, Chapter 2. We had Chapter 1 a couple of weeks ago, and that was awesome. I assure you that Chapter 2 is going to be just as awesome. I'd like to welcome this evening, um, in particular, our past district governor, David Edwards, who I have seen on here. He has supported every single one of our presentations. Uh, past district governor, Leslie Harry Paul. I haven't seen any other PDGs, but if you're there, I welcome you. I welcome also the district governors if they are there, but I have not seen them. Welcome my brother and co-DGE, Charles Seeley from District 7020. Welcome also our DGN, Sonia and DGND Leslie. I've also seen on the, on the chat this evening our DMO, um, Audley Knight, um, and welcome him as well. Um, we have two special guests with us this evening, folks, and I'm really excited to have them with us. And the first one that I have here is Pat Patricia Schaefer, and Patricia is the executive director of New Gen Peace Builders. She is a peace activator and a peace fellow and a senior fellow in the Washington based um, Peace Education and Alliance for Peace Building. Fantastic to have Patricia, and you're going to hear a lot more about her. And we also have Summer Lewis. I met Summer, I can't forget Summer. Just look at her hair when you see her, you can't forget her. Uh, this shock of red hair. But I met Summer in, in Hamburg, and um, from there we started the conversation. Summer is a Peace Fellow, and she's also, she works for Rotary International as the coordinator of Rotary's work with the Institution of Economics and Peace. So two special guests, um, fellow Rotarians. And of course, I want to welcome all of our leaders both Rotarians and Rotaractors to this evening's session. And fellow Rotarians, just join me for a second um, as we, we take note of what is happening in our world. I ask you just to observe a minute, not even a minute, a couple of seconds of silence as we show our respect to all those who are standing up for what is right. A couple of seconds. Thank you. And without any further ado, therefore, I hand back over to District Trainer Nigel, who will introduce our panel. Nigel, you're, you're, you're on mute. Sorry about that, folks. I just seem to have gone off. I was getting a little bit of trouble there. Um, I'd just like to introduce our speakers this evening. Our first speaker is Dr. Virginia um, Asin Osberg, who joined Rotary, International, Rotary Club of Paramaribo Central in April 2004. She is a dual district member of Rotary having been a member of both District 7020 and 7030, and also is a multiple club member, having been member of the Rotary Club of St. Martin Sunrise as well, and the Central Port of Spain Club in Trinidad. She has served on several boards, being the Vice President, Secretary, and Director of those clubs, as well as is the past President of the Rotary Club of St. Martin Sunrise. She's now once again back in, in Paramaribo and has rejoined her original club, 
Rotary Club of Paramaribo Central since July 2019. Virginia has initiated and participated in many community and fundraising projects, combining her public health work with her Rotary service work. She has, she has been and continues to advocate for child obesity prevention intervention since 2009 and is the district lead for the Ch Childhood Obesity Prevention Project in 2020-2021. You may ask how has Virginia managed to be a member of so many clubs? It, and her, it's her passion for healthcare. Virginia is a physical therapist and physician by profession and holds a master degree in public health with concentration, concentration in national health program management for non for health organizations, let me read that, with concentrations in health organizations and planning. She has held several government positions in Suriname, such as the National Program Manager for Non-Communicable Diseases, Head of Planning, Deputy Director of Health at the Ministry of Health. From 2011 and 2017, she was the Chief Medical Officer and Head of Collective Prevention Services for the Ministry of Health in St. Martin. From 2017 to 2019, she was a director for surveillance disease prevention and control at the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, in Trinidad and Tobago, the organization that is testing all the, the COVID cases in Trinidad and Tobago. She is married to Ronald, three grown children and one granddaughter. Her oldest daughter, like her mother, is also a rotator. Our second speaker tonight, I call him Mr. Polio. I have known Raj ever since I entered Rotary. And since that time, in 1998 to 2016, he has served as a polio chairman 16 times in that period. Raj Jaju was inducted in the Rotary Club of St. Augustine in 1987 and served as its president in 1993 their 25th anniversary at that time. And in order to mark that auspicious occasion, his club was instrumental in sending 25 children for open heart surgery to New York. They fitted out 25 elderly patients with pacemakers, and he encouraged 25 of his members to donate to a Paul Harris fellow in that year. He also started the Jaipur leg for which the club became synonymous over the years. He was named Rotary, Rot Rotarian of the Year in District 7030 in 1993 to 94. In 2002 to 2003, he received the International Service Award for Polio, a Rotary International Regional Service Award for a polio free world in South, North, and Central America, including the Caribbean. In 2003 and 2004, he received the District Governor's Citation for Meritorious Service for Polio Eradication. In 2007, from Rotary International, he received the Rotary Foundation Certificate for Appreciation. He also visited Barbados, where the Rotary International President presented him with two out the Outstanding Service Award and the Meritorious Service Award. He has received the Significant Achievement Award from the Rotary International President. But Raj is someone who puts his money where his mouth is. And I witnessed in April 2013 at the District Conference in Grenada, where he challenged Rotarians and clubs to give to Polio Plus and asked them to match as he put his money forward in pledging money for the Polio, Polio Plus program. Raj managed to raise 100,000 US in 10 minutes at that function. On a national level, he's a recipient of the National Hummingbird Medal Silver for Community Service. He's been the president of the Arima Business Association, and he's a former director for Habitat for Humanity. In May 2017, the Shaman Dharma Mahasabha renamed the El Dorado North Hindu School of 580 students, the Raj and Sati Jagdio. Eldorado North Hindu School. He is, in, he 
He's an entrepreneur, having formed several businesses on his own, and is married to Sati for the past seven, 35 years. He has three children and three grandchildren. He and Sati are both level three major donors to the Rotary Foundation, with three diamond pins each. He has contributed 55 Paul Harris Fellows, and likewise all his children and grandchildren are Paul Harris Fellows, all having been donated to the polio program. Tez, I have always been in awe of his passion, and he certainly is someone who is a hard act to follow. Our third presenter, is Debbie Rupchan. Debbie joined Rotary in 2011 and served as the president of the Rotary Club, Club of Princess Town in 2016 and 17. She's also served as director of the club boards on several occasions. Debbie is currently serving the second term as the assistant governor and for the South Cluster of Clubs of Trinidad and Tobago and is the Rotary District Peace Fellowship Subcommittee Chair for 2019-2020. She will continue to serve in both capacities in the upcoming Rotary year. Debbie is also a member of the Paul Harris Society. During her presidency, she focused on peace and conflict resolution and spearheaded her Rotary Club's hosting of a major celebration of the UN World Peace Day in collaboration with the mayor of the city of San Fernando and the Mediation Board of Trinidad and Tobago, titled A Call for Peace. A Call for Peace was not just a celebration of World Peace Day, but recognition of the need for a greater focus of peace and peace building within the city of San Fernando and Trinidad and Tobago, and was the introduction of Deb Debbie's passion and journey into promoting peace. Debbie is known for wearing her rotary piece spin as part of her work, as you will see in the photograph above. Professionally, Debbie is an attorney at law, engaged at a private law firm since 2009, and is a registered attorney on the legal aid panel, as well as she does lots of pre bono work for clients through legal aid clinics at rotary outreach programs and otherwise during the course of her business. As a litigation lawyer, Debbie has been exposed to conflict on an almost daily basis, leading to a greater appreciation of the importance of peace and the peaceful resolution of disputes. She's a keen disciple of the teachings of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, known for his employment of nonviolence peaceful resistance to bring about change. As you will see, Debbie is standing next to the peace, me the peace message, which says, may peace prevail on earth, which is written in four different languages, English, French, and she probably acclaims San Fernando, the city, as a city of peace. Fellow Rotarians, I give to you, first of all, Dr. Vanessa. Thank you, Nigel. And while you're putting up the presentation, let me first of all greet our DG, Lyle Chase, and all the fellows who are on the call. Uh, this is a sincere pleasure for me to pres present to you today on the subject of childhood obesity. And let me also thank Nigel for the kind introduction because the excitement goes both ways. It's very exciting to be presenting to both District 7020 and 7030. So I've also seen while I was scrolling through the uh, list, many of our fellows that I know from St. Martin and I see many fellows from Suriname also on the call. So I'm going to present to, do, to you today on the topic of childhood obesity. And although we realize that much of our attention these days goes to the COVID response, we should not forget that we still have a very big uh, epidemic going on with chronic diseases and that childhood obesity is kind of the precursor for many of these chronic diseases. 
Um, so it's very fitting that uh, we pay attention to that. And I do have to give credit also to our district governor, Lyle, when we started talking about important topics to focus on for his Rotary year, that he immediately was keen on doing something with childhood obesity. We have modified it a little bit, and uh, today I'm not going to go into much detail about activities that we will be able to do, but I'm just going to give you a little taste, like a little lick, on what we can do as Rotarians in regards to childhood obesity. Um, I also have to thank our uh, our supporter with the uh, Brian who is handling our slides. So can I have the next slide please, Brian? So the presentation today is a very short one. I'm first going to say a little bit about what childhood obesity is and what the consequences are. And then I will spend a few slides talking about why it's such a big deal. And I will close by sharing with you what is needed and what we as Rotarians can do on this topic. Childhood obesity is, you don't even need a definition for that. You just have to look around. And I don't know how many of you saw some of the videos that um, were shown in while we were in the waiting room, but childhood obesity is something that we are seeing now these days much more than we have seen it years before. It increased tremendously. And although we see it, there's still a, a, a definition for that. It's a group of children that are obese and the obesity can be measured into what is called a body mass index, index where you look at the weight of the child against the age of the child and you look at where the child is on the grow chart, as soon as the child enters the 95 percentile or above, you know that the child is obese. And the, uh, the, the consequences of childhood obesity, you will get the slide, so I will not go into the details of that. The consequences are severe medical consequences that a child can have, and it, it ranges from quick uh, challenges with neurological problems, cardiovascular problems, but we shouldn't also forget the psychosocial challenges that a child can have when a child is obese with all the bullying going on in school and the self-image of the child. So many uh, medical consequences are linked to childhood obesity. Can I have the next slide? So yes, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because of the medical consequences. And I've already said it in the previous slide that obese children are more likely to develop a variety of health problems. And they are listed here. So obesity is a problem in itself. It's also a medical condition and it can lead in later life to other conditions like hypertension, diabetes, uh, heart diseases, depression, anxiety. So the list is there and it's just a subset of challenges that uh, an obese child will be able, to, will have and when they grow into adulthood, they will be more likely to develop these challenges. Next slide, please. It's also a big deal because it's a growing problem and this chart says it all. And every time I speak about childhood obesity, I use this slide just to show that around 1975, the percentage of children being obese was less than 5%. It was around 3%, even less than 3%. And gradually over time, just like we were talking about the silent epidemic, happening with diabetes and hypertension is the same silent increase happened. And you see that the increase at some point became a steep increase so that now around this time, around 2016, 17, 18 uh, and 2020, 
we see percentage of childhood obesity that are passing the 40%. So 40% of our children in schools, we see that, we see that around us, are overweight. And within that overweight group, we also have a big percentage of children that are obese and some of them even morbid obese. And it's a growing problem. So we have to do something about this. If nothing happens, this increase will continue and the challenges that go with the increase will also continue. Next slide, please, Brian. It's also a big deal because it's very expensive. And the expense that we have are not only expenses that are related to the medical bills. Yes, you have medical bills because a child that develops medical conditions when the child is obese. And don't forget when I say medical conditions, I immediately also mean psychosocial problems that goes hand in hand with medical bills. And you know that, and, and many of us see that because we pay our medical insurance that the premiums are continuously increasing and they are increasing because our medical expenditure is also increasing at the same rapid increase as we see the increase in obesity and the increase also in the chronic diseases that are related to obesity. But the expense next to the direct expenses are also indirect expense, expenses that we incur when it comes to obesity and not only childhood obesity. And the expense that we are incurring have to do with absenteeism. Many studies, so when I was preparing for as the district chair, so when I was asked to be the district chair, I also did a lot of studies on what is the economical impact of childhood obesity on, uh, on, on, the, econ on the economy? What is the impact? Because as a public health professional, you know the medical part of it, you know the health part of it, but you know that there is also an economic burden that goes with it. And in many of the studies that I went through, you realize that something that we haven't even discussed further, that's why I'm mentioning it here, is that it is shown that persons who are obese are more often absent from their work. Let me haste to say that whatever we do with obese persons can never be used to stigmatize. So we shouldn't stigmatize persons, but whenever you have scientific information, you have to use that information. So studies have shown that persons that are obese are much more often absent from their work. But what it also showed is that even if they are present at work, it means that they are still absent because their production, their performance is less than the performance of non-obese person. And I'm not going to say what I said in my mind, but I wrote it down. So you can do the exclamation yourself. We are Caribbean people, so we know that. So do the exclamation yourself, but realize that when it comes to the burden of, the, of obesity, it's both, both medical, but also non-medical, direct and indirect. Next slide, please. This is almost the same I said in, in the last slide, that it's a big deal because also of the direct and the indirect cost. This is another way of showing you it with numbers. And sometimes numbers speak louder than just text. Here you can see the numbers. It's not num These are not numbers from the Caribbean. Unfortunately, we do not have sufficient data to be able to do these studies ourselves. But when you know that, you can extrapolate that information and that it can be generalized to your own situation, you realize even if it wouldn't be the same type of numbers, it's in the billions that the expenses go. So either the direct ones or the indirect ones, in the, the costs are in the billions. So we have to do 
something about that. Next slide, please. So what is needed? So I'm not going to go into much more length about the challenge of obesity. Now it's time to act. We have to act, we have to act now. And I said it in the beginning, yes, we have to pay attention to COVID-19 because that's a serious challenge, but this will not go away. Even if COVID is gone, we will still have children. And if we don't pay attention and we continue to pay attention, we will get a bigger problem if we don't pay attention to childhood obesity. So what is needed? We need to get the children to drink more water, less sugary drinks. We're not going to go into discussions about the industry. So we're not going to talk about provision of sugar sweetened beverages, but we are going to promote healthy behavior. And that's what we can do as Rotarian. What we can also do is promote healthy eating, not just as a word, but in deeds. Show children what it means to have a healthy meal, to eat a healthy meal, what should be on your plate? How can you get it? Eat more fruits, eat more veggies. Um, the, one of the videos spoke, spoke about the 95210. I think this is something we will have to adopt and take over and do something with it. So make a note, 95210, because we can use it. Eat healthy, more fruits, more veggies, and exercise more. So that's what we need to do. We know if we look at, the, at the, the age groups in the world that children are around one third of our population, but they are 100% of our future. So that's also a very important reason for us to pay attention and to do what is needed with our kids. Next slide, please. So if we know what is needed, we also should now be able to say what needs to be done. We have to tackle the issue head on. And although all children need to get our attention, for this coming year, our district governor is asking us to target a group, start with a target group. And we are proposing to target children in the age group five to nine years old. That's a very critical age, five to nine years. We have to target them in public and private schools. We know that children spend most of their time in school. That's where you will find all children, especially children in the age group five to nine. They spend a lot of time in school. This is where you will be able to target them. And we do it in both districts. 7020 and 7030. And when do we have to do that? Yes, the initiative is for 2020. So we are going to start uh, planning activities for 2020, 2021. But fortunately, and we know she's on the call, our DGN, Sonia Aline, is also very keen on paying attention to uh, childhood obesity. So it's not only for 2020, 2021, but what we are trying to do is to initiate the attention to childhood obesity so that even after 2020, 2021, we will be able to continue to work towards reducing childhood obesity in our region, in our districts. Next slide, please. So how can we help? Every Rotarian can help. And I easily will be able to speak for a week to go into details about how each and every single individual Rotarian will be able to do a contribution. But I'll just keep it short. I'll just go through these four bullet points. Facilitate and promote data collection, recording, and analysis. I said in the beginning when I showed the slide uh, um, about the increase of childhood obesity, that we don't have sufficient data from our own region. So if there is anything that we can come up with to facilitate and promote data collection, that's already supporting the region 
in being able to target. The one who measures knows. And when you measure, you will be able to do something about it and you can compare the result. And one of the suggestions that we had shared, shared earlier, earlier with you when we started promoting childhood obesity was to look into things like donating skills and height meters. We will go into those details during the year and talk about what are the different opportunities that we have to be able to facilitate and promote data collection. So there will be more also IT related things. Support decreased consumption of sugar sweetened beverages. That means that you will have to be able to offer the children an alternative and that's water. So there are also many activities, many projects that you can do to support drinking water so that there is a decreased consumption in sugar sweetened beverages. Water fountains, reusable water bottles, those are things we can think about. Facilitate and promote proficient healthy food choices in schools. And that can also, we can also talk about this for days. We talk, we can discuss how you can do competitions, drawing competitions, poetry competitions, writing competitions, working with cafeterias in schools, um, menu competitions, making booklets. So the, 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 the opportunities are numerous also there. And facilitate and promote physical exercise in school, donation of materials, upgrading of sporting facilities. So these are some of the things that I just want to throw out there for you to start thinking about what is possible in your club, what is possible in your area, what is possible in your district. Next slide, please. Brian, can I have the next slide? Oh, okay. So what do we aim to do with that? With all the activities, what we aim to do is reduce the incidence of childhood obesity in our community, reduce chronic diseases and cancers in adulthood, instill healthy lifestyle behaviors from a young age, and for Rotary Clubs to make a meaningful impact and secure a healthier future for our children. And you know what the good thing is? All of these are measurable. So we will be able to show not only our outcomes, but we will be able to show our impact later on in years in the future. So I think that I'm almost at the end of the presentation. Can I have the last slide? We can make a difference. So let's do it. Thank you. And I now give the floor over to my fellow who was already introduced the one we all know as Mr. Polio, Mr. Raj Jadu. Over to you, Raj. Thank you, Virginia. Uh, DG Lai, PDG Leslie Harry Paul, PDG David Edwards, PG and Sonia, Sonia Allen, PDG and Leslie Ramdani, District Trainer. Nigel Lakwi, past president of the Rotary Club of St. Augustine, uh, Maria Mohammed Maharaj, fellow presenters, Virginia and Debbie, fellow Rotarians in District 7080 and 7020. As you all know, I am very passionate about polio. And then when we look at the first slide, it tells that story all by itself. That is polio, the forgotten killer. Forgotten to many, but is still a threat to children of the world. Next slide, please. Support of, um, functions of the Rotary District Center 30, Polio Plus Subcommittee. Supports Rotary commitment to polio eradication and encourages participation in Polio Plus activities. Polio does not respect 
geographical or political borders so that we have to take uh, cognizance of the fact that so many people have to summon borders, carry um, polio vaccines to some of the most remote areas on the face of this earth. Next slide, please. Uh, goals, no, no, go back here. Goals of Polio Plus Subcommittee, that is education and public awareness, increasing donations to the Rotary Foundation, fundraising activities, and also to have functions for World Polio Day, which is normally celebrated on the 24th of October every year. So I would come back to those in a short while. Next slide, please. Rotary is a core partner of the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, established in 1988, uh, three years after Rotary launched the Polio Plus program in 1985. Uh, you will also see there the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation, who joined in 2007 and made their first contribution of $100 million. When you see Gavi, which is the Vaccine Alliance, they only joined recently, that is December 2019. So Polio Partners uh, with his Rotary, World Health Organization, Center for Disease Control. Next, next slide, please. <clears throat> when you look at this graphic picture, it tells you what polio is in truth all about. It is a tenacious disease that affects the motor neurons of the brain. It is an infection. It strikes at any age, typically children, <clears throat> sorry, under the age of five years. It is due to poor and careless hygiene. Symptoms is fever, fatigue, headache, vomiting, stiffness. And what we have to learn from those machines that we are seeing is that the bottom is the line. As long as polio threatens even one child anywhere in the world, all children wherever they live, remain at risk. The iron lung, as you are seeing, was to help children and adults in breeding. Most people spend their entire life in an iron lung chamber. As a matter of fact, up to today, <clears throat> I was researching and one Philip Alexander sent 1954 is in one of those chambers and he's still alive and he resides in Texas. So that tells a story all by itself and that is since 1954. Next slide please. This is a short video on the surveillance system for polio produce by the World Health Organization and its partners, including Rotary International. Maria, you got you? Virus begins with a sick child. One day, Amina wakes up unable to move her arm and leg. She is showing symptoms of acute flaccid paralysis. Her parents travel with her to the nearest healthcare center. Each case of acute flaccid paralysis acts as a signal that polio might be circulating. Because polio lives in the intestine, the health worker collects two stool samples from Amina. 146 World Health Organization accredited laboratories around the world 
test around 200,000 stool samples from people with paralysis every single year. From this vigilant testing, 99.99% of stool samples come back negative for polio. But that tiny fraction of positive results tells the World Health Organization where the virus is hiding. Epidemiologists gather to analyze the data that is collected through the polio surveillance system. The answers they find help to predict the best way to stop the virus. In more than 70 countries, the World Health Organization helps to keep this system going. In this way, we can keep children like Amina protected from polio in the future. The work of thousands of people makes the polio surveillance system the most extensive of its kind. From the most remote villages to conflict zones to huge cities, they find and stop the polio virus wherever it exists. Next slide, please. There's no cure for polio. It can only be prevented. Do you know that more than 10 million children will be paralyzed in the next 40 years if the world fails to eradicate polio? We owe it to our children and the children of the world to get the job done. What we have done in 2004, we were able to immunize 170 million children in India in one day. 170 million children were immunized in one day and Africa some 25 million. That will tell you the extent of which it, the Rotary and its partners go to make sure that polio is eradicated throughout the world. Next slide, please. When you look at the map there, the world map, you will see that in 1988, the infrastructure resulted in the reduction of polio cases from 350,000 cases of polio per year in 1988 to 176 in 2019. The number of endemic uh, countries of polio in 1988 was 125. In 2019, only two countries were reporting cases of wild polio virus. That is Afghanistan and Pakistan. And Nigeria has not reported a case of wild polio virus since 2016. So they have to wait two more years to be certified polio free. When you look at 2020, we have only 54 cases. That is 43 cases in Afghanistan and 11 cases in Pakistan. And when you look at the map, you would see the two areas here in red, in the deep red, that is Pakistan and Afghanistan. But when you look at, at Africa, you would see Nigeria is of a lighter color. Likewise, the whole of Africa is of a lighter gray. So that we are still looking at the African continent because we can never tell what could happen at any given time. Next slide, please. When we look at this map, we entered 2020 knowing that we had challenges to address and overcome to stop transmission of polio in endemic countries and sustain and build on progress in other areas. Then COVID-19 pandemic has been a curveball that nobody could have anticipated. And when you look at the map here, you could see more or less, it shows up just as how polio was years gone by. This is a recent map that shows the countries affected. It is reminiscent of the, of the map 
from the early days of our fight against polio, a virus that has impacted life throughout the world on which, like polio, was not well understood and initially lacked a preventative vaccine or effective cure, therefore placing an extraordinary public health threat to communities and burdened health system throughout the world. COVID is a public health emergency. Due to the unique nature of COVID-19 and the way the virus spreads, immunization activities, particularly mass immunization campaigns, including those for polio, has been paused. It remains to be seen how long this disruption will last, but it will most certainly result in more vulnerable children and probably an increase in polio cases. We were unable to immunize for the past couple of months some 80 million children. The focus required to combat COVID-19 pandemic will also divert already limited and finite human and financial resources. Next slide, please. When we look at the polio infrastructure, uh, it supports the COVID-19 response. Polio Plus, the Plus in Polio Plus, Global Polio Laboratory Network, testing for polio and COVID-19. When we look at places like Pakistan, where we had so many problems, where our volunteers were killed, now there is a call center and they are receiving calls from even the Taliban about COVID-19 and also for polio. Next slide, please. The polio infrastructure supports COVID-19 response. The plus in polio plus continued. Con community mobilizers educate on polio and COVID-19 prevention. The log logistic officers portfolio vaccine facilitate distribution of personal protection equipment, which also now carries the polio uh, logo, which is end of polio now. We have hundreds of thousands of healthcare workers who are moving from door, door to door and surmounting borders to make sure that every child is immunized against polio. And also we are trying our utmost because Rotary has built the base for, for, for of polio eradication so that we could continue doing the work in the prevention of COVID-19. What we have, what they have done in Nigeria, Pakistan and Afghanistan, they are giving out soaps so that they can educate the people about washing their hands ever so often and changing clothes and having the right sanitation in, the, in and around the environment. Next, uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please, Maria. Yeah, Rotary National Polio Plus Committee supports COVID-19 response. The plus in polio vaccine carriers provide by Rotary use to transport COVID-19 specimens, like in Pakistan, also Afghanistan. Uh, Rotary Polio Resources Centers have been used as COVID-19 testing sites which is a plus also for Pakistan. And there are food rations provided to needy families, both in Pakistan and in Nigeria. So that the Rotary International is very much involved with COVID-19. They have set aside uh, a couple of millions of dollars to assist with COVID-19. Next slide, please. Rotary National Polio Plus Committee 
supports COVID-19 response, providing personal protection equipment within Polio Logo now, as I said before, and they are now repairing ventilators in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Rotary established Polio Lima, a committee which is religious leaders in India, and they are totally focused on COVID-19. As you know, just as well as I know, COVID-19 is would, would be here for a while until we get the right vaccine. And we have several countries in the world that are working on that presently. But we'll have to live with it for a while. Next slide. Polio work continues. Bottom line and call to action. Be proud that polio eradication infrastructure that Rotary has helped build in supporting COVID-19 pandemic as it has for natural disasters such as Ebola, yellow fever, SARS, avian flu, etc. COVID-19 pandemic reminds us of the polio epidemics. Rotary's dual priority to support COVID-19 and polio eradication. Next slide, please. Bottom line and call to action again. We are to raise some $30 million is a fundraising goal for also the Rotary year 2020-21 and fully leverage the Gates Foundation two to one matching matching uh, grant more or less. District designated funds match two to one by the World Fund and then two to one by the Gates Foundation. Beginning immunizing children as soon as possible, requiring full rotary leadership and encouragement. It is said that during the course of this month, we are going to restart immunizing children against polio. Next slide, please. Rotary District 730, call to action. Education and public awareness. Ed increasing awareness of polio plus amongst Rotarians, Rotaractors, Interactors, and also general public, especially relative to the fight against COVID-19 and other similar diseases. The onus would be on us to make sure that we get all the media involved so that we could educate the general public about polio and COVID-19. Next. Uh, the frontline health workers remain mostly women uh, uh, and they work tirelessly, some 100,000 workers, speaking to mothers about the effect of polio and also the vaccine. Also, we have thousands of medical officers assisting, and they are just doing this from service from their heart. As they say, service to man is service to God. We, in District 730, would like to realize a sum of 100,000 US dollars to be raised throughout 2020, 2021 towards the Polio Plus program. You, next slide. Increase me member donations to the Rotary Foundation. PHF incentive program to encourage members in District 730 to donate to the Rotary Foundation. Polio Plus Fund, that is some $25,000 cumulative contributions from members in District 730 to the Rotary Foundation. Uh, the Polio Plus and, and PHF incentive program during the 2021 Rotary year, what I would like to do PDG line is that I am willing to give 25,000 points that I have 
which could work out to 50,000 because I would be given 500 points to Rotarians and who would put uh, 500 US dollars instead of the thousand dollars so they can become a Paul Harris fellow. That therefore would give us an, a surplus of some 25,000 US dollars. So we are left with some $75,000 so that we could raise. Hopefully, we are to speak to all the various clubs at a later date so that they can get some of their members who are on the periphery of becoming major donors. And um, if we could get them to become major donors and if we could get other members of the Rotary fraternity and friends to make a contribution towards polio eradication. And hopefully, hopefully, we are looking at about $30,000. And then we have a difference at $35,000. And with that $35,000 US dollars, I would like that every Rotary Club have a fundraising event for polio eradication. And I would like to let you know one time PDG line is that from that $35,000, I would cut that down to 30000 because I would take an additional, five, I would contribute an additional 5000 US dollars from beginning July to polio eradication. Next slide. To arrange and execute various fundraising activities of which I already said, and I explained this because I want every Rotarian to understand that this disease is that we are doing it to, for our children and for the children of the world. And I am appealing to every Rotarian to try the utmost and see what best that they can do so that we could help eradicate polio from the face of the earth. We as Rotarians should stand proud and to know that we were part and parcel of this global initiative to get rid of polio throughout the world. We have to end polio now and the onus is on each and every one of us. Would like, um, we would like that every club, as I, mem as I mentioned, to have a fundraising project. And we are also organizing here in Trinidad, a virtual telethon with some prominent artists on World Polio Day, which will be on the 24th of October, 2020. That was going to be something very big, of which past president Maria, myself, uh, past president Vishnu Balu were involved. But it so happened that COVID-19 came and put a damper. But we would not give up. We would still try to do our utmost and see what it is we can do to raise some funds for an polio campaign through the Teleton. There are so many Rotarians who would like to become major donors. The time is now. As I said, we are on final inch. We are so close. We are so close. Even self that you have to sacrifice and do something to save the children of the world. Be a true Rotarian and try to make that sacrifice. If you look at the picture on your, on your left, you would see that we had a big um, walk against polio um, two years ago, and that was last year, and that, had, that worked very well. And also that is a project that could be done by all the various Rotary clubs 
so that you could educate and sensitize people about polio. There were so many people outside there do not know what polio is. Polio is really a surge that could damage this world at any given time. What I would like to do now is to end and ask every Rotarian, every Rotarian to just remember that there is absolutely no cure for polio. It could only be prevented. And to the world, we are just one. But to one, we are the world. And just remember, the world is one family. And we are the ones in a position to assist the needy, I won't say the less fortunate, the less needy society. And the onus again is on us to make sure that we help our children and the children of the world. Because all polio needs is a boat ride, a plane ride, no passport, no visa to start all over again. And because of COVID-19, we have to be even more vigilant and stronger to save the children of the world. Thank you, God bless. I'm looking forward to the support of every Rotarian in District 70 and all Rotarians throughout the world. Our next presenter would be Debbie. Thank you, Nigel. Good evening to all. I acknowledge the presence of Rotary Institute for Economics and Peace Partnership Coordinator Summer Lewis and Patricia Schaefer, Executive Director of New Gen Peace Builders with us tonight. I want to share with you how the District 7030 Peace Committee came into existence. DG, Lyle and I are both strong advocates for peace. We both shared the concern that while Rotary and its members as practitioners of development directly build the optimal conditions for peaceful societies, there was a need to focus on peace directly as an area of focus within our district. Recognizing this imperative, we saw the need for a committee to focus the district's energies on peace towards bringing about a culture of peaceful social interactions and of peace being the foundation of all our engagements to complement Rotary's own commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion as reflected in its DEI statement. And that is that Rotary values diversity and celebrates the contributions of people of all backgrounds, regardless of their age, ethnicity, race, color, abilities, religion, socioeconomic status, culture, sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity. The circumstances surrounding the tragic and unconscionable death of George Floyd which inflamed passions and has led to riots and protests across the world is a live example of the need for a culture of peace and that now more than ever, we need to embrace peace by rejecting racism, by building tolerance, by appreciating that we all belong to one race, the human race. All concepts which are built into our DEI statement but which we need to embrace under peace as an area of focus. As stated by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. The District 7030 Peace Committee. We do not underestimate the enormity of the task, but undaunted, undauntedly, we assembled what I consider to be an A-team, comprising Rotarians Marguerite Nushaya of Suriname, 
Brian Ramatelli of Trinidad, Christine Chalou of French Guyana, Carlotta Walcott of Guyana, Heather Toll of Barbados, and I as chair. A diverse team of committed Rotarians, united by, by the ideal of giving peace a chance and of promoting peace with a mandate to establish peace in District 7030. As Mahatma Gandhi so wisely stated so long ago, there is no path to peace. Peace is the path. What is peace? I want to invite you to think for a moment about what is the meaning of the word peace. Oxford Dictionary defines peace as quiet, tranquility, mental calm, freedom from or cessation of war, freedom from civil disorder. I submit to you, peace is that and more, and in all its meanings holds a unique status in Rotary. Rotary approaches peace not as an abstract concept, but as a living dynamic expression of human development. It is both a cornerstone of Rotary's mission as a humanitarian service organization, and it is one of its six areas of focus, one of the channels of activity through which its members make their mark on the world. Ultimately, Rotary creates an environment for peace to happen. Rotary firmly believes that if concerned citizens mobilize locally to create peace, change can happen globally. Rotary and its members are mediators in conflict situations, educators for the next generation of peace experts, as its Peace Centers program having prepared more than 1,500 peace fellows for careers in peace building, advocates for citizen-based diplomacy, and importantly, practitioners of development which can underpin more peaceful societies. Rotary's work in water and sanitation, in disease prevention and treatment, in maternal and child health, in community development and literacy, this all directly builds the optimal conditions for peaceful societies. There are clubs in District 7030 that are engaged in peace projects, and I highlight projects from four clubs. The Rotary Club of Paramaribo Residents panel discussion on peace. Suriname is known in the world as a country with a multi-ethnic population and a large variety in culture and religion. Rotary Club of Paramaribo Residents invited a panel of respected leaders that would represent the largest religious groups in its community to lead the discussion on how can faith contribute to increasing peace in your community. This is an example of peace through discussion and education. Let us look at the Rotary Club of Pinal's Peace Walk and Symposium. The Rotary Club of Pinal, together with the South Cluster of Rotary Clubs Trinidad, hosted a Peace Walk and Symposium on 21st September 2019 to commemorate UN World Peace Day. The event was attended by Rotarians, Interactors, Police Youth Clubs, the Judiciary, I was there, and many others who participated in a candlelight peace walk prior to assembling at the Naprima Boys Auditorium, where its president, Dr. Nasir, presented on the Global Peace Index 2019. Here we see the engagement of so many members of the community in promoting peace through awareness. Let's look at the Rotary Club of Cayenne's youth program and milk distribution. The photos show the signing of a partnership agreement between the cadets and the Rotary Club of Cayenne as the club's signature youth program geared towards helping young people from vulnerable districts. They also show the young cadets undergoing special training with the army. The photo shows the distribution of milk for a mother from one of the poorer districts of Cayenne. These are projects that undoubtedly promote peace. 
And lastly, let's take a look at the Rotary Club of San Fernando Trinidad Cotton Hill Water Project. The club provided water tanks to rural Cotton Hill, a community without pipeborne water. Such a project is not just focused on water and education, but it is one that promotes positive peace. Providing a community with clean drinking water means children are less likely to miss school due to health problems, and education can lead to a better job and opportunities in the future. Adults are also less likely to miss work and are better able to provide for their families. All of this is conducive to peace. Rotary's engagement in peace building. Rotary as an organization has been committed to peace from its very start, with a seat at the formation of the United Nations in the creation of UNESCO and to date high level consultative status with the UN Economic Social Council. Today, Rotary continues to hold the high consultancy status for a nonprofit organization at the UN. And every year, there's a celebration of Rotary Day at the UN. Rotary's history of peace building is too well documented for me to repeat. There's a very useful document from the RAG for Peace titled Rotary's Peace Milestones, which would be available on the district's website with my PowerPoint after the session. The following slides capture the financial outlay by RI as to peace building and conflict prevention. You would note that in 2019, the total funding across the area of focus was 97.8 million. But during the Rotary year 2014 to 2019, a total of $20.1 million was spent on peace building and conflict prevention. These slides are self-explanatory. I want to talk about the Rotary Peace Centers. The Rotary Peace Centers offer a fully funded master's program and professional certificate development program. There are seven Rotary Peace Centers at eight universities. Five centers offer master's degrees in disciplines related to peace and development. Two centers at Chulalongkorn University in Thailand and Makariri University in Uganda offer professional development certificate in peace and conflict studies. The Rotary Peace Fellowship Program is a fantastic program for persons with a keen interest in peace. In District 7030, we have one Peace Fellow, Rotarian Christine Charlot, who is a member of the Peace Committee and who will present to our district in the upcoming year on the Rotary Peace Fellowships. The annual applications for the Peace Fellowships just closed on May 31st, 2020. Our district received two applications. The next round will be in February 2021. In the upcoming year, our committee intends to increase the number of applicants within the district for peace fellowships. Now there are restrictions as to, reply, as to applying, and I have done a comprehensive document on the Rotary Peace Fellowships, which will also be made available online after the session. I want to touch on Rotary's strategic partnership with the Institute for Economics and Peace. IEP is the world's leading think tank dedicated to developing metrics to analyze peace and quantify its economic value. It does this by developing global and national indices, calculating the cost, the economic cost of violence, analyzing country level risk and understanding positive peace. And what is positive peace? Simple, it is a concept created by Johan Galtung, a Norwegian sociologist who is considered the father of peace studies. IEP took this concept and created a framework extracting the pillars of positive peace or the eight common features or foundations found in peaceful societies. IEP's research is used extensively by governments, academic institutions and other organizations. So, Rotary and IEP 
have engaged in a strategic partnership, building on IEP's empirical research on peace and Rotary's grassroots work in communities around the globe. The partnership is comprised of two main activities. The first is the Rotary Positive Peace Academy, and this is a free online learning platform with tools on learning on positive peace. And the second is positive peace workshops and community programming. Here, Rotary and IEP have created a toolkit which Rotarians can use in their local communities to promote positive peace. I strongly encourage you to visit the IEP's website, which has a wealth of resources on peace. Peace Fellow and RI Coordinator Summer Lewis, who is with us tonight, will be presenting to District 7030 on the 20th of July in greater detail on the topic of IEP's relationship with Rotary. I want to touch on District 7030 and New Gen Peace Builders. Our district is currently in talks with Patricia, Patricia Schaefer, Executive Director of New Gen Peace Builders, who you would have heard DG Lai mention earlier tonight. And these talks concern the training of positive peace facilitators in District 7030. What do we aim to achieve through this training? Our goal is to equip civilian peace builders to be the first district to model positive peace activation to scale, to train, facilitate Rotarians, Rotaractors, Interactors, with and as connectors to community leaders and organizations. Rotary can't solve it all, but Rotary can convene and bring forth skilled positive peace facilitators who have experience producing quality projects and that is the outcome we would be aiming for. This program is targeted for rollout early in 2021. In August of 2020, we intend to host a Zoom session with Patricia Schaefer, by which time more details as to the project would be available. Throughout the Rotary year, the committee intends to conduct Zoom sessions with key speakers on areas linked to peace building and conflict prevention. September 21st, UN World Peace Day. RI Director Peter Kyle would be our committee's feature speaker on peace. And all clubs are encouraged to attend this session and to engage in projects on September 21st, as well as in the month of February, which you know is Peace Building and Conflict Prevention Month, centered around promoting peace. This slide has some useful links as to peace entities, which you can take a look at for your further information. In closing, I want to leave you with a quote from our founding father, Paul P. Harris, and it is this. It is easier to interest men in war than in peace. It therefore requires more moral courage to talk peace than war. Let us then have an all-out war in our fight for peace, and the committee would summon its moral courage towards keeping you informed of its initiatives towards the realization of peace. I thank you. Thank you very much, Debbie. Um, I'm sure that we've had it's been a long night, so I, there's several questions. What I'm going to do is when I'm, I'm going to take one question each, and then we will follow up with answers afterwards. So the first question goes to Virginia, and I need to find it here. Um, Virginia, um, the question is, are there any fixed or defined projects and already designed or recommended by the district committee, which clubs are expected to do in schools? And how exactly is the district project committee going to help clubs? Uh, any, any ideas on that, Virginia? Yes, uh, thank you for that question. Excellent question. There are some uh, examples already that we are going to share with uh, the different clubs. And some of the uh, some of the projects that we are looking at 
are there is a there is a very interesting book that was uh, that was uh, published. It's a book. It is in French and it was published. It's about childhood obesity, and we are looking into translating the booklet also in English, so it can be made available online in soft copy and. Clubs can then use that book uh, as an informi for information sessions and make printouts and share with schools or share with uh, libraries. So that's one example. But we also have other um, suggestions that we are going to roll out in earlier communication. We had shared that information with the, with the different clubs. So what we are going to promote is to look into promoting drinking water in schools, uh, things like supporting schools to have water fountains that kids, children have access to water and also share water bottles. So those are some of the examples. And of course, as district leader, we have a team and I should have introduced my team. I don't have them with me, but we have a team of different experts. It's uh, some from the some different uh, of our member countries. So with the team, we are going to also provide support to all the different countries. Um, and I will be reaching out to them either through the AGs or directly with the, the, the presidents. So uh, that guidance will be there. Thank you very much, Virginia. The next one is for Raj. Raj, I got a note from... Um, uh, past Rotary International President Barry that he's $25 million short of his Polio Plus um, uh, target. So he's, he will probably call you, but um, I just want all the clubs to know in the district that he sent that message while we were online. So anybody, we have a few days more left. I want to put a plug in here for Polio Plus. Uh, I know we have been all very, very um, um, occupied with the COVID, but polio is still a reality and, and we are short $25 million. So that is on behalf of past Rotary International President Barry. But um, the question for you, Raj, um, what type of Polio Plus projects can clubs do themselves or with help from the Polio Plus Committee? Is there anything uh, you have in, in, in mind? Yes. One, one of the easiest things that they can do, one is a barbecue, one is a fundraising dinner, three is that a walk against polio, um, and they can raise quite, uh, quite a large sum of money in that. Those are just some simple, very effective fundraising um, projects. Likewise, what they can do is that I remember um, with that same Grenada issue is that I spoke to my club and I was able to get 50 polarises in one given year. And if presidents could speak to their members, I am sure, I am not saying that they can do 50, but I am sure that they could do at least 10. They can do it. The, it all hinges on the presidents that they're supposed to lead by example. And once they could talk encouragingly, I am sure that people are compassionate. They are real passionate about polio and to end polio. Because without ending polio, all children lives are at risk. Thanks very much, Raj. I know you could probably sell ice to the Eskimos, but you've always had that, that, that charm. And the last question is, Debbie, um, the Peace Scholars, how do we apply and with only one in the region, is that person available for um, meetings and discussing with us? Right, so I'll take this, I'll answer this second part first. Christine Charlotte 
is a committee member. And as I mentioned, she would be doing a presentation on the Peace Fellowship during the course of the upcoming year. Um, you can contact her, the committee bios are online after the session. If anybody wishes to make direct contact with her, you could certainly reach out to Christine either directly or through the committee. And I'm sure she'll be able to assist. I continue to be the Peace Fellowship Chair, so I'm always available and open to any questions that anybody may have in relation to the topic. As to applying, the application form is on the Rotary's web page. Um, web page. Applications do are closed for this particular tranche. So if you are interested in applying, you're gonna to have to wait until February, 2020 when they reopen. Okay, um, I see Summer Lewis is just posted something in the chat. I don't know if she's been unmuted. I'm going to take one last comment from her. Uh, Summer, uh, are you unmuted? If you can, say a couple of words. And there's Summer with her goal. Hi, thank you. <laughs> Hi, well, thank you so much again for the invitation. It's wonderful to see how active District 703720 is. Um, in all different aspects, of course, childhood obesity, polio, have they have to do with peace as well. But I also want to congratulate Debbie on an amazing presentation. She's a wonderful peace chair and it's been a joy to work with her thus far. What I shared in the chat box are some tools uh, and resources that are available as part of the Rotary Institute for Economics and Peace Partnership. So the partnership is really focused on providing educational tools to Rotarians to understand peace, through this concept that Debbie so, so clearly explained, the positive peace concept and the positive peace framework, as put forward by the Institute for Economics and Peace. The document shared here provides some of the actual activities um, that Rotarians can participate in. Debbie mentioned many of them in her talk as well. Um, so uh, I'm happy to share those here. As I always say, the partnership exists uh, to help Rotarians better understand peace and make it actionable so that can be done through projects, through trainings, as Debbie mentioned with NewGen. There's so many different ways. So I'm here to provide support at the Rotary level, more than happy to do so, uh, and also working with Debbie this coming year. So thank you. Sama, thank you very much for attending and, and for being part, um, supporting Debbie for District 7030. Okay, it's been a long night. Uh, there's some other questions which we cannot field. We will try and get them answered for you as best as possible after the meeting. Um, but I would like to invite our brother, our friend, District Governor-elect Charles City to say some, some closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nigel. Good night, everyone. And uh, wow, <laughs> we were sending some little notes and really talked about how powerful all three of those presentations were. They each actually deserve a night of their own. And hopefully, um, I will get to borrow them, please, Lyle, and bring them over to 7020 on individual sessions when they can speak to our clubs as well. I look forward to that opportunity. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And not so much the information, your passion. Uh, I can't think of anyone who did not get from those presentations that each of you are passionate about the interests that you have in Rotary. And that's what makes Rotary so special, that all of us could find something that's intriguing, that's important to us. And you can find like-minded individuals in Rotary, and we can band together, and we can do some great things. I really, really want to thank you guys for your presentations tonight. I know it was fulfilling to those of us who are listening. It actually left us with our mouths open because we wanted more. And so... Uh, between Lyle and I, I'm sure we'll make that available to our members so they can hear more and more of not what all we've done, but also what we can do. This is a bittersweet moment for me. Um, I, I certainly would like to recognize my district governor, Delma, who I saw as well. Uh, I did see my district governor nominee, Louis, uh, and we've all been on from early this morning. Uh, I had a presentation 7 a.m. and they were there at that presentation, so I know they've had some long days. And I also saw a passage of Governor Felix, uh, who interestingly was on, we were on another meeting just before this meeting. So Rotary is keeping us busy. I guarantee you we're, we're keeping busy. But the bittersweet moment is that uh, for District 7020, uh, this comes to end our formal training program on the PETS schedule. Uh, we have been invited by District Governor Lyle to join some of the other sessions at 7030 
will be hosting Beyond today. And I've, been, I've cer certainly told my team that they are encouraged to go and attend those sessions as well. But in their formal training, uh, which is mandatory for them, uh, this actually brings it to a close. And what a phenomenal experience this has been for us. Not even appreciating when we first talked, Lyle, where this could have gone. And so I am overwhelmed in what has become to be one of the most successful district conference I mean, pets training I've ever been to and I've ever been a part of. And I'm not kind of putting my hand on my back. I'm really talking about how time has created an opportunity that we all took advantage of. So even in the midst of something that was that looks to be very disastrously, here is a jewel that has come out of it, a partnership between two districts, two districts that I think because of this year are gonna be even stronger together moving forward. And I really thank you for that. There are so many people behind the scenes um, that has made this possible. There is a gentleman from your district. I only know him by his name. I cannot find a picture for his face. And that's Sean Patty. I'm coming to visit just to meet Sean Patty, who has been working all behind the scenes with the technical team to do some great things. Um, Liz, Natty, all of the persons who helped with the translation. Oh my God, you guys, you really made it so much easier for all of us. And I can't say how much I thank our two uh, moderators, uh, Nigel and of course, uh, Barry Rassen. I, I tell you, uh, people think it's easy. For those of us who are camera shy and gun shy, we know what public speaking is like and you guys navigated those sessions for us in such a fantastic way. So I'm really, really thankful to everyone, those who helped to coordinate the programs. And I don't think there's ever been a PETS training that has had so many stellar presentations throughout the length and breadth of Rotary. We had the creme de la creme, and we'll continue to see those as we continue with 7030s uh, training. But this has created such a beautiful opportunity. I am more than thankful for the support of 7030. I will continue to sneak on some of the other sessions, uh, but formally, I want to say on behalf of all the members of District 7020, thank you. Thank you, thank you to District 7030 for allowing us to spend this time together. I wish you all a wonderful evening. For us in the Bahamas, it's a, um, we have a holiday tomorrow. And so that means I just have more free time to do more work. But uh, for those of you who don't have that, uh, I trust that you will enjoy your weekend. And I look forward to the many opportunities that we will have once again to share and to do good. Thank you all and good night. Thank you, DGE Charles. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, while you may have put me in the same boat as um, past RI President Barry, uh, we're, in the same, we're in the same storm, certainly not in the same boat. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to be in his boat. But it would be remiss of me not to ask DGE Lyle to say a few words, because this is your last day and parting is such sweet sorrow. Thanks, Nigel. I don't want to keep people back, but Charles, my brother, it has been an absolute pleasure. pleasure. And to all of those Rotarians in District 7020, I sincerely hope that I can come to your conference next year. Charles, either we got to do it together or you gotta, we got to make sure that we can come to each other's conferences, right? So it, it's been phenomenal. And um, are we going to miss you guys? We have um uh, on saturday we have uh stephanie urchek where we're dealing with strategic planning and then we've saved the best for last so if you want to see sean patty you gotta show up on tuesday the 9th because sean patty is presenting <laughs> on tuesday the 9th okay so i look forward to seeing you then take care everybody god bless stay safe Thank you very much, DG Lyle, and thanks very much to all the presenters who did a phenomenal job tonight. Um, to all the background people, Liz, Abe, to the translators, Uwe, Vicky, and Natalie, and of course, Sean Paddy, the anchor in the background. Good night, have a safe evening, a great evening, and we look forward to seeing you again. Good night. <laughs>